Good morning guys, this is Mike Mike Cooks and Builds. Um, this morning I'm going to do something I've never done in a long, long time. And I could use my mixer for this one, but I like to do this by hand. Um, what I'm going to be making is bannock. I've never made bannock in at least, well, 10 years. So I'm trying to remember the recipe. Normally I would do five all-purpose flour, five tablespoons of uh, baking soda, two eggs, and then two cups of water. But I'm making a smaller batch just as a test here. So this is just going to be, this is two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, the two and a half tablespoons of baking soda, one egg, one cup of milk and water mixed. So I've mixed my dry ingredients together in a nice big bowl. I've mixed my wet ingredients together. Now I'm just gonna combine the two. Just get a mix out. If it is a bit too dry, you can always add a little bit more milk or water. So I'm just gonna mix this around quick. And see how that one goes. If my measurements are right or not. As soon as you start getting lumps, that's it. That's all we need. I'm gonna put gloves on for the next section. So I'm just going to start forming a ball here. Sometimes it's a little bit sticky, sometimes it's dry. It depends on the quality of the flour. But like I say, if you need to add more liquid, add more liquid. If you want to add a little bit more flour, you can do so. But remember that we will be adding flour when we start kneading. Try and get all of them bits incorporated there. into the middle doesn't feel too bad at the moment so I'm just going to move that over for now and I'm just going to get a small amount of flour just for kneading I love these OXO containers from Canadian Tire Nice and air seal. That's it, one little click. It's open. Click it on. That ain't going nowhere. So that's me flour on the board. So now I'm just going to start kneading this around. Now we aim to maybe fold around about 10 times. We don't want to be going too far with it. Keep the flour underneath so we're not sticking. We don't want hard, a hard dough. Now I normally just leave that to rest a little while. I'm just gonna leave that in my bowl with a towel over the top for 10 minutes or so. Just let that rest whilst I clean up. So I'll flatten my dough out a bit. Doesn't want it to be too precise, just nice and rustic, just pull them apart a bit. So don't be too heavy with it. And then I'm just gonna cut. Into pieces. we can just fry up something that, like that will do nice and rustic look good around the campfire um, for the native guys and girls out there yes I probably not done it the same way as you but this is the way I was taught um, slightly different but I will be frying this I usually put that into a tray and cook that on the in the oven but I'm going to try frying it I've never fried it in a long time so we'll give it a go So before we start cooking, uh, just break off a small piece of the dough. The pan feels hot this way, but we need to see how it reacts for the dough. So if it starts cooking, it should start fizzing, popping straight away. Not quite hot enough yet, so we'll leave it a little bit longer. Just 
So we'll leave that a little bit longer and we'll let that one cook up and heat up. So I've added a couple of bits of dough there that seems to be cooking nicely now. So I'm going to add our bannock squares. Now always place them in and place away from you so you don't splash. Depends on the size of your pan. Four is plenty there. Just keep a, an eye on the temperature. Keep them moving around that little bit. Make sure they don't touch and stick to each other or stick to the pan. Just leave them alone for a few couple of minutes and then we'll turn them over. Looks like these little test pieces are done. So what we're looking for is a nice golden brown colour there. Just have a check of the colour. Okay so far. Beautiful and simple. Um, as I understand the bannock was originally from Scotland. The Scottish travellers who came to Canada brought that with them and it's been adopted by the native peoples of North America. But it's also been transformed slightly. They do it in a slightly different way. Um, it would traditionally be cooked in an oven or in a Dutch oven if we're on a campfire. So we'll turn that over now. So keep them moving that little bit. And there we have it. Nicely cooked bannock. Take them out and we'll put them on some paper to drain off. We don't need all of that oil in there. Doesn't take long to cook at all. As soon as they start puffing up and they've got some colour on there, you know that the inside's done. Beautiful. So nice and crispy on the outside. Give it a little tap test. Yep, nice and crispy on the outside. We'll see what they look like on the inside when I cool down a little bit. Well, let's have a quick look, see what these are like inside. A little bit dense. Nice enough. Just a little bit firm. I'd be okay with a little bit of, maybe like a little bit of jam or something like that in there, but. Good for soup. It's almost like a scone, I guess. Oh. Well, we'll leave that one there for now. It's a dark, reasonably light inside. I just mixed it too heavy handed, I think. So next time, better one. 